Beneath him, the clovered hill slope was warm in the sun. Northwest Smith moved his shoulders against the earth and closed his eyes. Breathing so deeply that the gun holstered upon his chest drew tight against its strap, as he drank the fragrance of earth and clover warm in the sun. Here in the hollow of the hills, willow shaded, pillowed upon clover in the lap of earth, he let his breath run out in a long sigh, and drew one palm across the grass in a caress like a lover's. He had been promising himself this moment for how long? How many months and years on alien worlds? He would not think of it now. He would not remember the dark spaceways or the red slag of Martian drylands. Nor the pearl-gray days on Venus when he had dreamed of the earth that had outlawed him. So he lay, with his eyes closed and the sunlight drenching him through. No sound in his ears but the passage of a breeze through the grass, and a creaking of some insect nearby. The violent, blood-smelling years behind him might never have been. Except for the gun pressed into his ribs, between his chest and the clovered earth, he might be a boy again years upon years ago, long before he had broken his first law, or killed his first man. No one else alive now knew who that boy had been. Not even the all-knowing patrol. Not even Venusian Jarl, who had been his closest friend for so many riotous years. No one would ever know now. Not his name, which had not always been Smith, or his native land, or the home that had bred him. Or the first violent deed that had sent him down the devious paths which led here here to the clover hollow in the hills of an earth that had forbidden him, ever to set foot again upon her soil. He unclasped the hands behind his head and rolled over to lay a scarred cheek on his arm, smiling to himself. Well here was earth beneath him. No longer a green star high in alien skies, but warm soil, new clover so near his face he could see all the little stems and trefoil leaves, moist earth granular at the roots. An ant ran by with waving antennae close beside his cheek. He closed his eyes and drew another deep breath. Better not even look. Better to lie here like an animal, absorbing the sun and the feel of earth blindly. Wordlessly. Now he was not Northwest Smith, scarred outlaw of the spaceways. Now he was a boy again, with all his life before him. There would be a white columned house just over the hill, with shaded porches and white curtains blowing in the breeze. And the sound of sweet, familiar voices indoors. There would be a girl with hair like poured honey hesitating just inside the door, lifting her eyes to him. Tears in the eyes. He lay very still remembering. Curious how vividly it all came back, though the house had been ashes for nearly twenty years, and the girl. The girl. He rolled over violently, opening his eyes. No use remembering her. There had been that fatal flaw in him from the very first, he knew now. If he were the boy again knowing all he knew today, still the flaw would be there, and sooner or later the same thing must have happened that had happened twenty years ago. He had been born for a wilder age, when men took what they wanted and held what they could without respect for law. Obedience was not in him, and so, as vividly as on that day it happened, he felt the same old surge of anger and despair, twenty years old now. He felt the ray gun, bucking hard against his unaccustomed fist, heard the hiss of its deadly charge ravening into a face he hated. He could not be sorry, even now, for that first man he had killed. But in the smoke of that killing had gone up the columned house, and the future he might have had, the boy himself, now lost as Atlantis, and the girl with the honey-colored hair. And much much else besides. It had to happen, he knew. He being the boy he was, it had to happen. Even if he could go back and start all over, the tale would be the same. And it was all long past now anyhow, and nobody remembered any more at all, except himself. A man would be a fool to lie here thinking about it any longer. Smith grunted and sat up, shrugging the gun into place against his ribs. 